If your girlfriend or the girl you're talking to or your sister or your mother with Alzheimer's has any of these vibes, run away immediately. In fact, don't even bother running. Take a shuttle to the airport, book a flight to goddamn Tanzania. If your girl is any of the things I mentioned, it is a major, major red flag. Spikes. If a bitch wears spikes, I don't know what to tell you, man. She's crazy. Take one good look at a girl wearing these dog collars and tell me that this bitch doesn't resemble a Tom and Jerry villain. Now, unfortunately, the trend of women wearing spikes is becoming more and more common, and I especially see this with Gen Z chicks who are just all out draped in spikes nowadays. It's just not aesthetically appeasing in any sort of way whatsoever. And you know, it's just not hot. I, I don't understand why they do it. You just look scary. Like Maybe I would approach you and ask for your number, but now I'm just scared you're going to put me in a leash and step on my balls. And I don't know why they're doing this. I suppose it's to look edgy or cool or give off a vibe that you're an outcast from society, but, but you just look like one of them like bulldogs from the pound. And I'm not freeing your ass. Don't come home with me. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to get bitten, so I'm not fucking with you. Neon lit bedroom. Neon lights in your bedroom are yet another indicator that you're not completely mentally okay like this ain't 1980 bitch you don't live in neo tokyo you don't live in a futuristic cyberpunk city with a fat mexican compatriot named jackie willis you don't live in blade runner 2047 bitch you live in a suburb outside of missouri and the only neon sign you're gonna see is like an ad for like cousin marriages i just don't understand why they put these lights in their room up as if they're magically gonna be transported to that world of the 1980s and i know they say "Ooh, it's aesthetic and it's visually pleasing look i understand that you're crazy and you want to escape the real world by putting these lights up so why don't you just admit it instead of lying about how this is purely for aesthetics and looks this bitch you're starting to look like one of them grape fantas you would buy at walmart and another problem i have with these weird neon lights is that it messes up your day and night cycle or circadia rhythm and chicks that be having these neon lights set up in their bedroom, they always be waking up at like 3 p.m. in the afternoon. They take three hours to get ready and brush their hair and shit. And then it's 6 p.m. by the time they're grabbing their morning coffee, like, bitch. And usually by this time, I'm outside the Starbucks, like, smoking weed or just loitering. Or And I look into the window, and it's always some chick with a full set of, like, edgy, like, goth clothes with, with those goddamn neon tubes strapped to their titty. And I'm like, yo... Why are you having your espresso at the devil's hour? And I have one more thing I want to mention about neon lights. I've seen bitches with the red ones, the purple ones, even the blue ones. But there's a new trend of like chicks using yellow neon light. And even though I know that shit is supposedly better for your skin, I just have to say from the bottom of my heart, there is a free form of yellow neon light you're seeking that doesn't cost any electricity, that doesn't suck the soul out of you. It's called the fucking sun, bitch. Step outside and get some sunlight instead of bathing yourself with some glow stick rod you bought off of Timu. Leather jackets. Now, leather jackets are a dead giveaway that she's gonna kill you. Like, it's already over, bro. Just give up. Write your will already. Send flowers to your gay lover Jamal already. Because, because a girl with a leather jacket is gonna dismember you. She's gonna roast your flesh. And then she's gonna shoot you just for good measure. You are in a relationship with goddamn Jessica Dahmer, cuz. She is clinically insane. Now, for the guys who think this is some cool shit, and they say, Oh, I want my wifey to be a motorcycle girl. You know, that's, that's cool and shit. I understand your opinion, but respectfully, the chance of her being a real motorcycle chick and not a murderer is like my chance of becoming a big YouTuber. Slim to none. Fishnet stockings. Now, the whole concept of these fishnet stockings just doesn't sit quite right with me. Like, if you're trying to show off your legs, okay, I get it. Just, just wear a skirt. You can show all that shit off. If you're trying to wear something because it's cold, then wear real pants. They'll protect you from all the icy weather. But don't show up with something that looks like a mixture of the two. It's not good for nothing. It's not good for cold. It's not good for showing off your legs. You're basically giving them a teaser trailer when the movie's already out. Like, bitch, I saw your legs yesterday, and now you're wearing fishnet stockings? I don't even have to imagine the gaps. I seen the legs yesterday. What are you trying to hide? And as for wintertime fishnet stockings, don't show up in minus 5 degrees wearing fishnet stockings and then proceed to complain about how cold it is. That's self-harm, which is another thing that these type of girls are good at. <laughs> whoa, 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 why has my shit been demonetized again? The lesson is don't wear fishnet stockings because the immediate assumption is that your pussy smells like Mr. Grouper. Astrology. Now this one is not as bad. But there are different degrees to it. Like if a girl just dabbles in a little bit of astrology from time to time, it's not too bad. But if they are heavily invested in it, it might be a problem. Babe, 
You should guess my astrology sign. And if you're right, you know, it means we're meant to be together. I right, let me guess. You're a cancer. Oh my gosh. You got that right. How did you know? You're a cancer to my life, bitch. The next vibe check is if she watches any of these three anime I'm, I'm gonna show on screen. If she's a fan of Serial Experiments Lane, Berserk, or Evangelion. Now, Berserk is okay. Uh, it's a pretty good manga. It's a pretty good anime. And I understand this shit as long as she doesn't support Griffith. But in the rare chance that your girl supports Griffith, hmm. I'm, I'm just saying, you might need to sacrifice her in the next eclipse. Yeah, as for Serial Experiments Lane, I haven't even watched this show, bruh, but I, I just know it's a red flag. If your girl watches it, just run. Just don't stay in a relationship with her. Lastly, Evangelion. Now, if she watches this, it's fine, but if she's really a, a hardcore fan of this show, I'm talking if she has plushies of the characters or like a framed photograph of Shinji's hospital scene, then, then it's a serious problem. This time, don't run away from her. Instead, get her some help from like a professional psychiatrist like Dr. Phil. Satanist. The last thing I want to do is be dreaming of something nice like the Cambodian War and then get woken up by a girl who's harvesting me for adrenochrome. It's just not a very nice thing to do, you feel me? But it is a fact that most girls that are Satanists aren't really Satanists and they're just like edgy people who work at Krispy Kreme and they do this whole human sacrifice thing as a part-time thing. And you know, I've thought about this for a while and the more I deliberate on it, the more I realize that Satanist chicks aren't even that bad. They're just silly. I heard about this uh, Satanist chick who went to Coachella, right? And then they started giving her some red liquid and she was all excited about it. Hoo hoo hoo, I'm worshiping the devil. I'm drinking blood. And she downed like three whole unsweetened bottles of cranberry juice. Now in the in the rare chance that your girl is a real Satanist, it may be a bit of a problem. Don't do it, please, for the Lord, she worships the devil. Look at that fat ass though. You know Satan got better punani. Those who step in the dark shall never see the light. Hey, shut up. Look at that fat ass though. <laughs> oh yeah. Tattoos. I don't discriminate against girls with tattoos, but you can't be an untatted guy and have like an inked up girlfriend. You gotta be tatted up to date him. It's like a members only club for people who inject ink into their bloodstream. But I do find tattoos quite interesting because they often say tattoos represent something like a story or an event or someone you love. Some deeper sense of meaning you got from an event within your life. But I seen a bitch with a Martin Luther Bling tattoo, so I don't really know if it holds up in court, dog. Despite all of this though, I respect the tatted up community. I'm gonna give them a pass just because one day I might get a tattoo myself and whoa, what the fuck? Piercings. Now about piercings, I gotta go by the famous quote, if done in moderation, it's okay. But if you have so much to where like you would fail a metal detector at an airport, it's just too much. I'm sorry. Like some of y'all looking like the, the tin man from Wizard of Oz. These heavy amounts of piercings aren't that common, but most girls will have like a piercing or two. Um, and I might just date a girl with a piercing or two just because I heard like silver is a good investment. You know, that shit's like it's a good move financially. It's very stable. But too many piercings just gets in the way. You can't kiss properly. You can't nuzzle your head and, and God forbid they try to suck your dick. Animal fur. Another huge issue I got is with girls that are wearing animal fur all the time. I ain't like a huge animal rights activist. As a matter of fact, I, I own like a couple North Face jackets. But when girls have clothing made out of a strange animal, it's a massive red flag. Like a fur coat isn't that bad, but when she starts telling you it's from a llama, I get slightly concerned. Like I've seen girls plenty of times brag about exotic animals that they use to produce accessories on different parts of their body. I find it incredibly, incredibly strange. I've seen people brag about crocodile shoes. Come on, bitch. Crocodile shoes, really? You feel the need to kill a gator and make footwear out of that? You know, that, that just strikes me as concerning. Like, if she's willing to kill a whole crocodile for some shoes, like, imagine what she would do if she thought you were cheating. Something's clearly not screwed on correctly. The next vibe check is if they wear makeup indoors. Now, I understand if you're wearing makeup outside to try and impress your friends or look good for the camera or just, like, you know, feel confident about yourself. But if it's just you and your girl at home and she's wearing makeup, what's she trying to hide from you, cuz? You gotta, you gotta be suspicious. You gotta suspect something. There's a number of things it could be. It could be a mole. It could be some hickeys or some kiss marks left by her boyfriend, Jamal. Or worst case scenario, an Adam's apple. You're not a lady? Yes. What are you? 
I'm lazy boy. Goofy ass shoes. Another red flag is like these goofy ass shoes. I'm talking about those massive shoes, like the ones used for hiking or the ones they use to climb Mount Everest. And girls just be wearing this like on a Tuesday at school. It really should be concerning. First of all, she's giving you the illusion that she's five inches taller than she actually is, which is already intimidating enough if you're short. And then on top of that, some girls add spikes to their shoes. And that shit just looks like a medieval torture device on her feet. Like, bitch, why do you feel the need to wear that? It literally serves no functional purpose. You're not going to walk better. It's not good for your feet. It's, it's fucking horrible for your arch. And you're going to leave like a trail of dead ants wherever you're going to go. The, the next vibe check you gotta be wary of is a record girls or VHS girls or CD girls. Now they're usually wearing Metallica t-shirts and they have the uncanny ability to switch between different male haircuts of the 20th century. Now I'm not saying you should run away from these girls, I'm just saying you have to understand that she would gladly trade your life for a vinyl copy of like a Led Zeppelin song or whatever. And this goes for girls who watch stuff on VHS too, and this also goes for girls who use CD players. You have a phone, this shit plays every song in the world for free, and you still want to spend your, your paycheck on a round circular disc that vibrates? My voice is just avoid them at all costs, because you don't want to walk into your house and see like a Polaroid album of you in compromising positions. And uh, are there any other bad vibes I should watch out for? Bonus, Bonus round. round. Bitches, Bitches with, with colored with hair. hair. Green hair equals, without her makeup she would be looking like this. Red hair. She is absolutely crazy. Do not approach at any cost. Just leave her to the goddamn leopard from Cheetos. Pink hair. Extra, extra dangerous. They present themselves as cute and cuddly, but when you get in bed, she's gonna pull out a pink strap on and you will be saying Bible verses. White hair. If she got white hair, what you want to do is politely decline the offer. Don't be too rude with it. Say, you know, ma'am, I'm sorry. I think you're beautiful, but I prefer women under the age of 60. Black hair. That's just natural, bruh. Blue hair. Why the fuck would you want to date a blue haired girl? It's going to be 24 hours a day, seven days a week of, uh... Can we talk about, like, the political and economic state of the world right now? Anyway, if she has any of these vibes, run away immediately. And don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button. Peace.